Hi, it's Amy from Cakes With Faces. Now, a few months ago, I made a video about katsu curry and how it was invented. And then I thought it might be interesting to turn it into a series and have a look at other types of Japanese food. Because when we can't travel, one way we can experience Japanese culture at home is through food. So today, the second in the series is all about sushi. We're gonna have a look at how it was invented, why anyone ever thought to start eating raw fish, and and we're going to compare sushi in Japan to sushi abroad, see whether it's the same, and I'll tell you a bit about how I make sushi at home. And there's new Japan videos on my channel every other Thursday if you want to subscribe. First, we're going to start off with how sushi was invented. And in fact, the word sushi doesn't mean raw fish. It doesn't have to contain any raw fish at all. The word sushi just means how it's prepared with seasoned rice with toppings. Originally, sushi was invented as a way to store fish and make it last for longer. They covered the raw fish with fermented rice and then they could keep it for up to a year. And then when it came time to eat it, the rice was actually thrown away and they only ate the fish. That technique is originally thought to have come from China thousands of years ago before people had fridges and freezers just as a way of storing fish. And you can still get that original type of sushi in just a couple of places in Japan. It's called nare sushi. One of those places is called Kitashina, which is by Lake Biwa near Kyoto. It opened 400 years ago in the 1600s and the type they make is called Funazushi. They take the fish and cure it in salt for a whole year. Then they take it out, rinse it off and dry it in the sun. Then after that, it's covered in fermented rice and left for another year before it's ready to eat. There are other places in the area that serve this sort of sushi that do the process in a couple of months, but Kitashina uses the original technique, which takes two whole years. Apparently, it's very pungent and quite an acquired taste. It has quite a strong smell and flavour, a bit like strong cheese, the type that smells, or maybe like a type of blue cheese. So that was the original first type of sushi, but what about the type of sushi we know today? Originally, that was called Hayazushi, which means fast sushi. It was invented in the late 1700s. People wanted nare sushi, but they didn't want to wait two years for it to be ready. So they used fermented rice vinegar and soy sauce to imitate the salty, sour, savoury taste. At first, the vinegar was added to cooked rice to speed up the fermentation process to just a few days. But then people got even more impatient. They didn't want to wait for that. They just wanted to eat it straight away, which is understandable. So they used the rice vinegar as seasoning on the rice and ate it straight away, just like we do today. Soy sauce was originally used as a marinade for the fish, as a preservative, just to make it last longer. But then as it became possible to serve fresher seafood, it was served on the side instead, just as a condiment. And actually, wasabi is also antibacterial and antiviral, so that also helped make the fish safe to eat, as well as being delicious. So it's interesting that a lot of these things weren't introduced because of the taste necessarily, but more to make the fish safe to eat and just be able to store it for longer. Sushi restaurants didn't really open up abroad outside Japan until much later when Japanese people started moving abroad and opening up restaurants. Some say the first one was in LA, Los Angeles, in Little Tokyo in 1906. Most of them closed down and then reopened in the 50s or 60s, which is about the time they opened in most other English-speaking Western countries. So what about conveyor belt sushi? Kaiten sushi was invented in the 50s by a restaurant owner in Osaka. I think I might have mentioned this story before, but I do really like it. The restaurant owner came up with the idea when he was in a factory watching beer bottles go along on a conveyor belt. He thought that if he could use the same technology in a restaurant, he'd be able to serve people more efficiently. It'd be a good way to keep costs down because you wouldn't need as many staff and he wouldn't have to take orders or serve people. Later on, he also had an idea for robotic sushi that's served to you by robots, but that one didn't catch on quite as much as conveyor belt sushi. 
Next, let's look at how sushi in Japan compares to sushi abroad. Now, I can't speak for all countries, but here in the UK, sushi tends to be quite an expensive high-end food. Japanese restaurants are quite expensive in general, and sushi especially so. I guess because it's quite a labour-intensive thing to make. You have to make each roll individually rather than cooking up a big pot of food. Whereas in Japan, you've got a whole range of price points. You've got expensive, fancy restaurants. You've got conveyor belt sushi restaurants, which tend to be quite cheap, just a couple of hundred yen per plate. And then you've got stand-up sushi bars, which is just a place to grab a quick, cheap bite to eat. And they can be even just a hundred yen per plate. In the UK, the most popular chain of sushi restaurants is Yo Sushi. It's conveyor belt style, but it's not particularly cheap. I always feel like I can't have as much as I really want to because the bill will be too much. So let's compare a couple of prices with Japan. A kafamaki, cucumber roll, you've got to have one of them. At Yo Sushi is £2.80. And in Japan, at Sushi Row, which is a similar conveyor belt sushi chain, it's 110 yen, which is only 68 pence. A salmon nigiri at Yo Sushi in the UK is £3.95. And at Sushi Row in Japan, it's 150 yen, which is 93p. So prices in England are about four times as much as they are in Japan, but eating out is more expensive here in general. Having eaten at both several times, I can say the quality in Japan is better. Obviously, conveyor belt sushi is cheap and it's not as good as at more expensive restaurants, but compared to its counterpart in the UK, the quality is much better in Japan. The rice is cooked better, the cuts of fish are better and it's fresher. And we have noticed that at Yo Sushi, the fish is sliced very thinly, probably to make it go further. I do like Yo Sushi, but compared to the equivalent in Japan, Japan is much better. Another difference is that in the UK, restaurants tend to serve sushi alongside ramen, katsu curry, and all sorts of Japanese food. Whereas in Japan, a sushi restaurant will only have sushi. You wouldn't be able to get ramen there or anything else. They also don't tend to serve gyoza, which are often a side dish at sushi restaurants in the UK. You'd more often find gyoza at an izakaya or a bar. Although you can get things like chips in butter soy sauce at some cheap sushi restaurants in Japan, so not everywhere is that traditional. The first time I ever had sushi was a box of lunchbox sushi from the sandwich section. I think it was from Boots. Um, they also served them at supermarkets, M&S, places like that. It's probably how a lot of people eat sushi for the first time. And I don't want to sound like some sort of sushi snob, but this is probably the worst type of sushi. The nori, that's the seaweed around the rolls, is really chewy, the rice is really dry, and it's not fresh at all. Lots of people I've met who've only tried that type of sushi from the sandwich section have told me they don't like it. They found the nori too chewy and it just put them off. So if that's you, consider giving sushi another chance if you get an opportunity to try it at a restaurant or try making your own or at other places like if you've got a Sainsbury's with sushi gourmet near you that's a lot better or from somewhere like wasabi or itsu and the boxes of sushi you get in Japan at the convenience store are also much better somehow they manage to keep it a lot fresher I think people in Japan tend to be a lot more fussy about the quality of the rice and the texture is so much better Another possible crime against sushi that I spotted is this, a frozen sushi meal. I've got to say this isn't usual, there aren't many of these, and I have never tried it, so maybe I shouldn't be too judgmental. But I don't know how that could be good when freezing kind of changes the texture of things. If you've tried it, let me know how it was. And on the other hand, in Japan, they have freeze-dried onigiri that you just add hot water to, to rehydrate. I think they're supposed to be for emergencies. So not everything there is fresh either. Next, in terms of what the sushi's like, I'd say sushi in the UK is quite similar to what you get in Japan. The main difference is the choices. In Japan, there's a wider selection of fish, and also in the UK, I think rolls are more popular. In Japan, it's the nigiri that take up center stage and make up most of the menu, and then you might have a few rolls, whereas in the UK, you get a lot more rolls as well as nigiri. 
you notice much more of a difference when you compare sushi in the USA to what you have in Japan. In the USA, it's much more fancy and elaborate and exotic with multiple fillings and cream cheese and sauces and all sorts of toppings. In Japan, it's much simpler and much more plain. The focus is on the freshness and the flavor of just one or two ingredients rather than adding extra sauces. So things like the California roll, the dragon roll, the spider roll, they were all invented in the USA and you don't really see them in Japan. You also don't really see brown rice for sushi. It's always white rice. I can't really say for other countries, so tell me in the comments what sushi's like in your country. All I know is when I went to Yo Sushi at the airport in France once, there were croissants on the conveyor belt, which I thought was pretty funny. I also spotted this gachapon recently, sushi made by foreigners, using one of those awful stereotypical fonts. There's the dragon spider roll, the volcano, train bomb and caterpillar action roll. And then there's the sushi donut, which while it might look delicious, is something you'd never find in Japan. They're making fun of sushi abroad, but it actually looks pretty accurate in some cases. Next, making sushi at home. Because sushi is so expensive when I go out to eat here, and because there never used to be any Japanese restaurants in my town, I took lessons and learnt to make sushi at home. It's so good, it's so fresh, you can make it just how you want it. So you can have it authentic Japanese style, or you can add as many toppings as you like. You can add sauces and make your own caterpillar action roll. It's also a really nice way to spend the evening. You can have your friends and family round and everyone can join in making rolls and then you can all eat them together. It's also not too hard to get hold of the ingredients. Lots of large supermarkets have sushi ingredients now. Tesco even has its own brand of sushi rice. Asian or oriental food shops and supermarkets often have sushi ingredients. Even if it looks like they mainly have Chinese food, they often have a section of Japanese food which will have stuff for sushi. Or you can order it online. It might seem like you need a lot of things to start with, but lots of them last for several meals. So once you've got them, you're good to go. And if you want to see how to make it, I wrote a comic book about how to make sushi. It is a real recipe book. You follow the instructions step by step as you go through the panels and it shows you what to do. You can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk with worldwide shipping. And there's also a set with the book, two pairs of chopsticks and a rolling mat. It makes a good present. And if your friends learn how to make sushi, maybe they'll make sushi for you everyone wins. I also made a video a few years ago going through the whole process so you can see what's involved. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a bit about the history of sushi, that original fermented nare sushi, and then a more fast food form of sushi that's the type we know and love today. Tell me in the comments about sushi in your country and what your first experience of it was. And I'll see you not next week, but the week after on Thursday. Bye bye.